What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul. I make videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I've been in Japan for almost 20 years now and making these videos is getting harder and harder because it's getting hotter and hotter. I'm sweating so much more as I do these walkabouts. I'm going to continue to do them because it's much more fun to film this way than sitting in a room. But anyways, that's why I have the inspiration for today's video, which is how to survive the Japanese summer the Japanese way. Basically, I'm going to introduce a bunch of things that I've learned about dealing with the summer heat from living in Japan. Some of them I believe in and do myself and others I think are a bit dubious, but let's get right into it. The first one is handheld fans. So handheld fans have been part of Japanese culture for centuries. They've never been gender specific. It's always been used by both men and women. And you will see people of all ages and all genders using fans in Japan to keep cool. Unfortunately though, in recent years, we've kind of seen the end of an era for that Japanese culture in the sense of the handheld fan in favor of electric fans, which have become much more popular. So more and more people are carrying the electric fan variety and not carrying the traditional handheld fan that you have to move yourself. You'll still see them at summer festivals when people are wearing yukata, so it becomes part of the traditional costume. But unfortunately, the days of just seeing a salary man on the train using a fan or an elderly lady walking down the street fanning herself are coming to an end. The electric fans are just too easy and too convenient, which is kind of sad in a way, but makes sense at the same time. Another accessory that you'll see a lot in the summertime is little hand towels like this one, typically worn around the neck to kind of collect the sweat that happens as you walk and spend time outside. They are absolutely ubiquitous on the mountains. Hikers wear these all the time. I've seen people jogging while wearing towels and just ordinary people walking about town will have a towel around their neck. Now, this is one that I don't really do myself because, well, I kind of think that sweat is meant to help me feel cool. So if I'm constantly drying the sweat with a towel around my neck, I'm kind of defeating the purpose. Maybe if it was dipped in cool water or something, that would make more sense, but I don't know. It's just not for me. Speaking of another accessory that's not for me, the gauze ninja sleeves, or at least that's what I call them. You'll see women mostly wearing these in the summertime. It's a black sleeve and they look like ninja sleeves because they actually attach by folding over the middle finger of the hand. So that's what holds them in place. And I don't know how much they do to make you feel cool, but they certainly keep the sun off of you. And that's the main purpose, especially for women who are trying to keep their skin white, etc., keeping the sun off. Honestly though, I have seen more and more men wearing these gauze sleeves as well. It's becoming something that actually both genders are using. And that's an interesting thing. Another one, that has actually gone genderless is the parasol. For the longest time, I would only see women holding a parasol to keep the sun off of them. But more and more, it's actually becoming something I see men using as well. When the sun really is beating down and it's 90 degrees and 90% humidity, I guess maybe that makes sense, but that's another one you're not going to see me using anytime soon. The heat in Yokohama is no joke. The worst part about it is that it doesn't go away. When I lived up in the mountains of Yamanashi, at least the evenings cooled down, and so you kind of got a respite from that awful heat of the day. But here, it'll be 90, 95 degrees or 30, 34 degrees Celsius during the day, and it'll drop two, three degrees with the sun down, and that's, that's just insulting. Now, a couple of things that I do think work and that I do actually use myself are, first of all, cool sheets. These sheets that they'll sell at any convenience store, any drugstore, anywhere. It has some kind of alcohol or menthol or something in the formula on the sheet that when you rub it on your body, it leaves kind of a nice, cool scent that will help mask those summer body odors and it helps you cool down because as whatever is in that sheet evaporates, 
it helps your skin feel cool, which is quite nice and does offer a brief break from just feeling sweaty, hot, and nasty. The other thing that works that you can also find in any convenience store are the frozen drinks. And these will be sport drinks, certain juices, and even tea. And the whole idea behind that is, well, if you have the frozen drink, you're carrying it with you, you can use it to hold to your forehead or to your neck to help you to cool off, as well as have a gradually melting, always cold drink close at hand and it's really nice that the convenience stores just have those naturally. I know some people actually buy them and use them as the ice packs that they put into a cooler so eventually they will melt and then be drinkable as well rather than wasting ice or you know using cool packs that you have to keep in a freezer all the time. The next two tips are actually coming from me from my experience of having lived in Yokohama for the past 15 years and that is First of all, actually go outside. Spend time outside. Force your body to adjust to a certain extent, especially in May and June when it's first heating up. If you're the type of person who, when the days first start getting hot and you're like, oh God, it's getting hot again, no way, oh, I'm not going outside, that's a big mistake. Especially when it first start getting hot, you should be getting out there, getting your body used to it. I found that once I stopped avoiding going outside in the hotter days is of spring, um, it started getting easier when it came to actually being outside in the summer. And the second tip is don't put your air conditioning set too cold. Don't have it going too strongly. And that's really simply just to help your body adjust inside outside every time you leave your house, every time you leave your office. You're not jarring your body with a completely different temperature and you're never getting used to anything. You'll find if you visit Japan that stores, department stores, hotels, etc. The air conditioning will not be as strong as you might be useful if you're from America. I realize I'm coming at this from my American experience of growing up there, but American air conditioning is just way too strong. It's way too strong. When I go back now, I have trouble adjusting. It always feels too cold to me when I'm in a department store or even on American carrier airplanes. The air conditioning is on way too high compared to Japanese carriers or other carriers. So my recommendation, if you're living here or even if you're staying here as a tourist in a hotel, don't crank your AC too high. Keep it somewhere where you can have an actual more honest, easier adjustment between the indoors and the outdoors. The final two I'm going to mention are very traditional. Uh, I'm not sure we can judge whether they actually work or not, but the first one is the hooting or the wind chime. In old times, samurai times, well, the hooting was thought to help you feel cool. The sound of that clear bell had a psychological effect to help you feel cool. I'm not going to say that that actually works, but I imagine if you're back in samurai times and you're dealing with the hot summer in Japan, you're going to grasp any psychological advantage you can get to feel cooler during the day. So fooding is a very traditional way to feel cool in Japan. And the other one, which is still very, very much practiced today is be sure to say, Atsui desu ne. Atsui desu ne. Atsui desu ne. To absolutely everyone that you meet. I don't know if that helps you feel cool, but it definitely is commiserating with everyone else. Misery loves company. You could feel a little bit better that everyone is suffering from the summer heat just like you. So let's all say that together. Repeat after me. Atsui desu ne. Very good. All right, you are ready for summer in Japan. Oh, just one more thing to add that I forgot to say while I was walking around before. How long does it take to actually become used to the Japanese summer? Results may vary, but it took me 10 years. I was here for 10 years before I started thinking, you know, this isn't as bad as I remember it. Finally adjusted. Now, I've talked to a couple of colleagues, one who said, oh, about five years, they adjusted pretty well and another who said it took him 15 years. I come from Wisconsin, which is a northern state. We get hot days during the summer, but the nights are cool and it never gets really as humid, certainly not as constantly humid as it is in Japan. 
So if you're from a cooler area, it might take you quite some time to get used to it. If you're from a hot place like Louisiana, maybe not so much. All right, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out my Journal of Japan Journeys podcast where I interview other long-term foreign residents about why they've stayed in Japan for so long. I have an Instagram. It's the same as this channel name. It's Xjapter, so go follow me on Instagram for a slightly different slice of my life in Japan, different from what you'll see on YouTube. And also I have a Patreon if you would like to help support the channel. I'm still a small channel trying to keep this hobby alive and kicking and I do enjoy making these videos for you and if you want to support that by all means I'm going to be linking that in the description below but once again thank you so very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one peace <laughs>